Hey everybody! I have had a busy afternoon here in the fish room, so I think it is time to take another trip around the world. I am going to do my best to keep this as brief as possible, but I think you're probably in for a long one today. I feel like we got a lot to cover. I got new fish, been working on most of the tanks in the room here this morning and so on and so forth. So let's get right into it. My waterfall tank, I just did a uh, fairly significant water change. The purpose was not necessarily to change the water, but to vac a lot of the mulm out of the tank. As I've mentioned before, this tank doesn't really have a whole lot in the way of circulation. Uh, the water overturns uh, high volume. I really move a lot of water with that pump, but that doesn't mean the water's flowing around the tank vigorously, and that doesn't pick up the mulm and circulate it and collect it up. And what it does is settle on the bottom in all those nooks and crannies. So I've got to get in there periodically and physically remove it. No big deal, just part of the way this tank is set up and part of the maintenance of it. And so that's what I did. I've also added two new fish to this tank. They are blue Japanese endlers. You can see one right there, that little bit of iridescent blue heading down to the bottom in the back. And I don't know where the other one is. Yeah, I do, there he is. They're usually right in there together next to each other. So I've also got some new fish that are in quarantine that are going to be coming over into this tank, but we'll get into more of that later. Uh, I'm really interested in getting this tank spruced up with a little bit more uh, color in it as far as the fish in there swimming around, a little more activity. So we've got that to look forward to. I have also sort of decided that I think maybe a summer project is going to be to rebuild this waterfall, or I guess it would be more apt to say build a new waterfall. Uh, maybe loosely based on this design, at least from a visual point of view, but I'm definitely going to build it in a very different manner when I do get around to building it. So, again, this is just thinking out loud. That's something that will be way down the road if I do get to it because I have been taking Java moss and just throwing clumps of it back in the corners here and there, and it's finally starting to pay off, and I'm kind of curious to see just how java mossy i can get this thing because java moss grows like crazy once it gets going and gets adjusted to the amount of light it gets and the nutrients it'll just go like crazy and it doesn't have to grow underwater at all if you've seen the inside of my snail tank you'll know just how lush and green um, java moss can be growing directly under a light out of the water so i've got some of it growing back here you can see it kind of coming up next to that little stubby daylily I've got bits of it that are starting to sprout up right there. I've got it starting to come up in several little areas up here. I've actually got it starting to come up in this area up here. And there's a few spots over in the corners back here where I've got it uh, thrown in there and it's starting to grow and come up. So it should be interesting to find out again how bushy that stuff's going to get. And if I start just slapping a new waterfall up here, it's going to do away with all that. I've also got some new growth coming out of my creeping Jenny over there off to the right. You can see how nice and green that is. There's a little bit of dead stuff from last year, but the new growth is coming in nicely. I just added that piece of wood recently. I was hoping that it would sort of soak up the water like a slow sponge and it would get to be a nice rich dark color and maybe even revive some of that dried up moss that's on the top of there, but no such luck. It's not porous enough and it's not really in enough water. So we'll have to just wait and see what happens with that piece of wood. I can always do something else with it. It was just a cool piece of wood I found out in the yard, brought it inside and stuck it in my uh, waterfall there because, you know, that's the kind of stuff I do. So that's all that I can really think of that's going on in here. Somebody did ask me recently about the temple plant that I planted in here. You can see that it is not yet growing emergent, but it is growing uh, pretty well. I would like the roots to be a little more down into the substrate, but I also can't really see under the substrate in the rock, so I'm not entirely sure what the roots are doing. So if it does root in and grab a hold securely enough, it should be able to grow up and out of the water uh, pretty tall without really having to worry about falling over or anything. Uh, otherwise, not a whole lot going on. I am getting some new growth on my Nubius right there, so that's exciting. I'm happy about that. And then, of course, you can see that Ludwigia uh, is growing nice and thick and lush and getting that beautiful red color to it so i'm happy about that too 
So while I was tinkering with this tank, I scooped some water out of this tank. Uh, first water change in quite a while. Uh, I didn't take any water parameters or measurements or anything like that. Uh, I didn't even vac out anything on the bottom. I just took a pitcher, scooped about two gallons of water out and then topped it back off. But we did get some water back in there. And I did check again this morning. There are still shrimp in there. I saw three full grown adult ghost shrimp and it's been again years since i've put shrimp in there so either shrimp live way longer than people think uh, which i think is true in one sense but i also think that i've had them breeding in there and they may not be breeding prolifically but enough survive that i've had this ongoing population in this tank for a very long time considering when i actually last time i actually bought uh, shrimp i think i've probably got some still living in my snail tank too so anyway, let's get these lights turned out so we will not have quite so much glare on the rest of my videos, uh, or the rest of the tanks, I should say. And I think the next day I'm out here feeling like it's going to be crafts day or something. I found some black paint, and I think I'm going to come along and paint uh, all this stuff you can see in the background a lot of times, because that's where a lot of that glare actually comes from, is that brightly colored stuff. So we might get in there and do that. I got a few ideas of how I'm going to reduce the glare in some of my upcoming videos. So again, got to wait till I feel like having an arts and crafts day. So my 29 miscellaneous finally got some significant changes done to it. I've got a brand new angel fish in there in the top left corner. Uh, absolutely gorgeous angelfish. I cannot wait to see this one grow out. It's going to be stunning. There's so many little flecks of blue and iridescent sort of pearly colors in there. And then, of course, that dark smoky coloration and the way the uh, dark and light colors blend together. It's really going to be a looker as it develops and grows. Uh, I think those fins are really going to splay out and it's going to get pretty significant, too. Uh, when you look at it in a 29, the size of the tank in relation to the size of the fish is gonna make it seem even more impressive, although it should have plenty of room uh, even when it's full grown. So the other fish I've put in here are these red and blue Colombian tetras, which I also like a lot. This is not one of my really brightly lit tanks. It just has a LED uh, lid that comes with the fish tank, so it's adequately lit. It's not overly lit. And that is probably why I don't have to get in here very often and do much in the way of cleaning out uh, excess growth on my plants. A lot of my other tanks I have to get in on a regular basis and, you know, basically weed whack the tanks and trim the plants way back. In this tank, I don't so much, although that java fern is starting to get a little bit significant. And I did actually just chop a big chunk of Anubius off that was growing almost up to the surface of the water. I uh, shot a quick video offering that for sale and it did sell by that evening. So that's already gone in the mail today and off on its way to its new home. Uh, hopefully it will get there in one piece and everybody will be happy. So that's what's going on. Oh, the other fish in there that I forgot about is that little Rasbora hat you can see right there. It's a one and only. It was still in my 40 breeder that we'll be talking about in a minute. And so I pulled it out of there. I also pulled the other single fish out of there and I put that upstairs uh, in my wife's tank. So that's no longer uh, in this tank either. And I'll leave you, I'll try to reduce that glare for you a little bit and give you a good profile look at that angel fish. That's gonna be a good looking fish. Uh, filter change, water change, wipe down the glass, all that good stuff in preparation for putting a new fish in there. So that all happened within the last couple of days. Moving on to my 55-gallon gourami tank. Of course, my regular long-time viewers know I call this my gourami tank because once upon a time I had lots and lots of gouramis in here, and now I'm down to two. I have that little orange one you can see off to the right, which is a honey gourami. And somewhere in there that I don't see at the moment, I have a moonlight garami. Oh, there she is in the same corner hiding right next to uh, the little honey garami. So that is my other garami in the tank, the moonlight. I'm not sure if it's male or female, to tell you the truth. I uh, just did a really big and significant water change on this tank. Got some crazy loach action happening down here. I uh, just did a really big water change on this tank. It's interesting to see how washed out and pale the colors on this loach are. That's normally a rich, dark, chocolatey brown. 
So I don't know if the water change has stressed it or if it's having issues with this other loach or what. I've never seen them really behaving quite this aggressively towards each other. Now I'm also down to one, I think I'm down to one skunk loach, which is the one you can see poking his head out from time to time. It has that black line down the center of its back, which is where it gets his name, obviously. And I had eight of them in this tank years ago, and I loved them. And it wasn't until after having them for a couple years that I was told that they are pretty aggressive and most people don't like them. And the conclusion everyone came to was that since I had so many, they sort of had their own hierarchy and they left everybody else alone. So I'm wondering if since I'm down to one of them now, if I'm not having issues with it harassing the other fish. Uh, I know both of those loaches will bother my angelfish on a regular basis. Never do any harm to it, but they just bother it and make the angelfish dash and dart around the tank. And, you know, this fish is not built for doing a lot of high-speed cruising and trying to get away from a sleek torpedo-like fish like a loach. So, not really sure what's going on there, but I have been considering getting more um, smaller loaches like that. Maybe some yo-yos. I've never had yo-yo loaches before. That would be fun. Um, so, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, based on what I'm looking at now, it's kind of leaning me towards that direction even further. Maybe getting some more uh, skunk loaches even. I really did enjoy them for all the years I've had them. So again, that's the last one I've had out of all original seven or eight of them I got. Maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe eight years ago. So anyway, all I did on this tank was wipe the glass down and change the water. No filter, uh, anything else. Oh, look, there's another skunk loach so i've obviously got at least two left shows you how well i know what's going on in my own fish tanks so i definitely still have two of the skunk loaches left uh anyway massive water change probably 70 percent and I cleaned the glass down. The glass, and I don't know what's going on with this tank, but the glass in it gets this growth on it that is so difficult to get off. It's like a blend of cyanobacteria and algae, but it just, I, I went through, um, I take melamine sponges and I cut them into these thin strips, like pads, and I use these. So that's basically a magic eraser, and these hold a ton of stuff and they are basically a really really super fine grit abrasive and it's not like wiping the glass down with a cloth at all it really is an abrasive and it just does again it's like a magic eraser it just wipes the stuff off surfaces this tank i went through about 15 of those little pads and wore my arm out wiping this glass down trying to get the stuff off of there and i've got it pretty clean but you watch, in three, four, five days, we're going to start seeing that stuff come back. I don't know what it is about this tank. In fact, when you look really closely right next to where these bubbles are, you can see some of the specks are still on the glass. I did not even get it fully clean. And that's just it's going to start growing back and spreading. Um, I, I don't know what it is. It's one of those weird little quirks about this tank that makes it really, really difficult to get that glass clean and keep it clean. Uh, so this is one of the few tanks that I will a lot of times wipe the glass down before I shoot video of it. I know a lot of times I say I just grab my camera and shoot video. Um, this one, the glass gets so dirty, you can't even see in the tank. And so sometimes I have to uh, get in there and wipe it all down just so you can see what's going on. So anyway, that's what's going on in that tank. Moving on to my 55 gallon tank. This once upon a time was called my angelfish tank because I had a whole bunch of angelfish in this one too. And I went round and round trying to have a tank full of angelfish. So we'll be talking about that in an upcoming video pretty soon where I want to talk specifically about uh, angelfish and my experience with them. But that is not going to be today. Uh, this tank still has my green giant. I know it looks very blue on camera. In fact, a lot of times it does look very blue, but it turns the right way and gets under the right kind of light. And suddenly you realize it actually does have a lot more green in it than you uh, realize. But... One of my favorites, I've had this one for years, and that is my Green Giant. So another tank I got in did a fairly significant water change, not a huge one, but I wanted to do a little bit of a water change and I wanted to do a little bit of experimenting with getting this tank cleaned up. Uh, this is another one of the tanks that I've been kind of putting off. 
uh, doing any major work to it because I want to sort of document that and get it all on video. And as you can tell, it's got green cyanobacteria growing all over everything. You can see more of it down this end of the tank because when I was in there, that's what I was doing. I was taking the gravel vac and I was going from leaf to leaf and I was using my thumb to wipe the cyanobacteria off and have it go right up the gravel vac and out as I was doing it. Um, pretty labor intensive. Well, I'm not gonna say labor intensive like it's difficult, but it's time consuming and tedious and you just gotta go in there and get every single leaf and so on and so forth. And so I think what I'm gonna do instead of starting with the cyanobacteria treatment i'm going to go in there and do a series of you know reasonable size water changes which i need to do anyway i need to bring the organics down in this tank and a series of medium sized water changes is a good way of doing that and while i'm doing it i think i'm just going to take my time get a few more you know leaves clean clean it out a little more we got some stuff growing down here on the gravel got some stuff on the rocks but it's not out of control in this tank. It really sort of covered everything and then it sort of slowed down and it almost looks like it's fading away. And I'm not gonna say dying off or, or dying back, but it's definitely nowhere near as bad as it was a couple weeks ago. So it'll be interesting to see if I can bring the nutrient level down and physically remove a lot of it. Can I just get to the point where we stay on top of it without having to do a treatment on the tank again i don't mind some of it being in there that's not the issue i'm not trying to eradicate it necessarily i you know i just don't want it looking like that i don't like it when it just looks like a green slime monster attacked my fish tank you know uh, i am also going to be getting in there very soon and doing a lot of removal of this uh anubius i've just kind of had enough of it it's just a ton of it in the tank it's old old uh plants that's probably pushing 10 years old now uh, might even be older than that. I got Anubius when I first started keeping fish, and this is some of it. And it's just been growing forever in this tank. So I'm not going to remove it, but I am going to reduce it significantly and maybe throw a few more other plants in there, maybe rescape the tank a little bit, put a few more, uh, you know, a little bit more visual structure in there or something. I don't know. I'm just getting tired of looking at this tank the way it looks, especially looking all, you know, kind of gross and nasty and covered with all that stuff. So look forward to some stuff coming up on this tank here pretty soon. Uh, moving on to my 40 breeder. Now, my Patreon patrons already know all about this. I've been kind of documenting this. I know I promised everybody I would document this when I got to it, but it was just getting so bad I really needed to get in here and do something, and I was just not up for shooting video about it, and so I didn't worry about it. I prioritize the tank over the video and started working on it anyway so far all i've done and i looked around i tried to find some old video clips i could show you know splice in to show you like a before and after and i could not find any believe it or not uh unless we go find one of my old youtube videos and i honestly don't even know how to cut a piece out of one of those and attach it in the middle of this so you're going to have to use your imagination uh my regular viewers will remember that this tank was just it looked purple it was covered in that red cyanobacteria and you can still see the sort of residue and remains of it all that sort of pale green slimy looking stuff this tank was covered in that red cyanobacteria it looked horrible the water was okay you know the water was fine for the fish and everything it just looked awful and my scraping fish my um i've got two different um rubber lips in this tank i got a clown pleco and a rubber lip pleco in this tank and they virtually had no surface left to scrape they were scraping the, the these few rocks that you can see that are nice and clean and that's all they were scraping and so i was having to keep feeding them with the algae wafers and so we're finally getting on top of this tank i'm going to be getting in here soon we're going to be thinning out some of these plants again these are plants that have been in here since my early early days uh, fish keeping they've just been in here growing uh, uh, slowly and steadily forever and they're so dense and compact now that the water can barely flow around this tank anymore so it's time for some work on it so far what i've done is i've used my chemi clean this stuff little goes a long way you are supposed to use one little scoop per gallon you can see what a tiny little scoop that is so that would be four of these scoops for this 40 gallon tank i did four big fat well-rounded scoops threw them in there it is critical to put an air stone i know i do have an air stone in the back but i had so much 
um, bacteria in here that was going to be oxidizing that I just wanted to make sure I had plenty of oxygen available. Uh, I have lost fish in the past by not supplying enough oxygen during these, you know, high oxidation uh, processes in the tank. So extra air stone, four big fat scoops. I waited two days, put four more big fat scoops in, and that's it two treatments back to back and I'll grant you they were big fat treatments but that was it I haven't done anything else no water changes I haven't got in there and physically removed any of it or anything and we've already got the tank looking like this and so I mean I, I you know I talk about the chemi clean so much that people probably get sick of me talking about the chemi clean but it's really good stuff I mean it just wiped that stuff out of this tank in a couple of treatments and it was bad it was thick in there and now it just looks like that so i'm really happy with the progress so far but we got a long way to go we're going to be doing some different stuff to this tank i've got plans i got some ideas of fish i want to put in here uh, i'm always open to anybody's suggestions um, without you having any idea what i'm already thinking about although again my patreon people already know what i'm thinking about um, but you know i'll listen to your suggestions throw them out there you might change my mind but i've already got an idea of what this tank is going to be here uh coming up probably by summertime i hope so make sure you subscribe you don't want to miss that moving on to my 125 gallon new world tank uh just did a medium-sized water change in this one this morning maybe took five six inches of water out of the top of it now I'll grant you we were already starting from about two inches low uh, needing to top off so rather than top it off I actually just pulled some water out and then topped it back off so everything's fine the um, you know you can tell the tannins aren't even really beginning to build up again I just did a pretty big water change on this not too long ago in fact um, I didn't even use my melamine sponge to wipe down the glass there was so little bit of stuff on the glass from my recent water change that I just used some of the uh, batting material that I used for filter material and we got the glass wiped down lickety split and then of course i also wipe down the outside of the glass with windex and a paper towel like i normally do when i'm done uh, with the water change so nothing really going on in this tank i haven't made any changes i am kind of considering um just because you know again my regular viewers know i really don't care i'm not a stickler about uh you know biotope tanks and this isn't some kind of science project it's my fish tank and i want to enjoy it it is what i refer to as my new world tank it does have uh, north american fish and south american fish in it but it's also got my african uh cichlid in there i've got a tilapia it's a west african fish not one of the the rift lake fish but it is an african cichlid fish in there and so i'm not a, a stickler about having these as biotope tanks or anything um and honestly the, the i can never remember the name of the family of fish the live bearer fish the mollies and the platies uh, or i always say platies but i realized the other day that it probably is pronounced platy because there's only one t it's a platy would be uh, p-l-a-t-t-y uh, p-l-a-t-y would be platy so i've been calling them platy for years i did buy one we're going to see that in a few minutes when we get around to my quarantine tank that is not going to be for this tank. That's going to be for my waterfall. But I got me thinking, you know, why not put some really colorful, pretty fish in this tank? Maybe some live bears and let them breed. They are technically, you know, North American fish, even though I get it that like a pineapple sword tail is not something you're going to find swimming in a stream somewhere. But again, I'm not really a stickler for biotopes or whatever i don't care if you're not going to see you know a black molly out in nature somewhere although you might see a black molly out in nature i'm not sure where they actually come from or if that's a hybrid or a man-made color scheme or what but anyway you get the idea i'm thinking about something like that maybe putting uh something in here that gives us a little more color uh speaking of which we are down to my last little oh no there's another one in the back there um i thought i was down to one of these little notropus uh, species. I don't know exactly what species they are. They're some type of Notropus minnow. Uh, they might be black nosed dace, but I don't believe they are. But they're really, really similar to black nosed dace. And I'm down to these last final two. Not because they're being eaten, but well, maybe because they're being attempted to be eaten. Uh, I've been finding them on the floor here in front of the tank uh, periodically, one by one, and that's why the numbers are dwindling. So maybe they are trying to get away from those creek chubs. Uh, because those creek chubs are definitely big enough now at this point to start making snacks out of those uh, minnows. 
So we're going to see how big those creek chubs can finally get. Uh, the last ones that I had in here, I got really big before I finally had to get rid of them because they were honestly getting a little too big uh, for being in a community tank like this. Maybe if kept singularly, they'd be okay in a 125. But, you know, in the community, they were getting a little bit too big. That was weird. Had a silver dollar kind of roll up on the side and stick its head up out of the water. It was probably waiting for me to feed it. They will usually come up and bite my fingers if I stick it in there. Now, of course, they're not going to do it. <laughs> All right, moving on. We got a lot to go and we're already 25 minutes into this. Uh, I'm not going to spend any time talking about my snail tank, but I will show you. I removed a ton of that java moss that's where i've been collecting it to throw in my waterfall tank and the water looks muddy because i threw some um garden limestone in there we're going to be actually talking about some uh, additives we can put in our tank in the fairly near future another video i've got in mind i've been kind of doing some experiments with we're going to talk about different ways to uh calcify your water and mineralize your water uh so on and so forth so again subscribe you won't miss that or anything else i've got coming up my 40 gallon native tank and this tank is full of native fish although technically once again the crayfish that is living in this tank is an invasive species i did catch it right down the street but it is not technically a native fish and so in this tank all i've really got swimming around at this point is a bunch of the uh, gambusia i'm not sure if i've got any of those other uh, minnows left. I did have three or four other fish that were those sort of brown stripy minnows. It looked like I had at least two different species of them, but now it does not look like I've got any of them left at all. And I know they're tough to see, but if you look all the way against that back glass, uh, they are basically sitting in the current of that power head and facing upstream. And I've probably still got 15 to 20 of those gambusia left in here and i actually did see some gambusia fry swimming around when i did a water change the other day uh, i have not seen them since so they may have become um you know snack food for the for the adults in there i don't know but that would be my guess there's plenty of places to hide and i even try to provide them with some vegetation so that any uh young ones might be able to survive but so far i've not seen anyone um you know any any medium sized ones i saw some fry and then i saw nothing again so that's about all that's going on with that um not sure what's going on with my filter in this tank either i went ahead and changed it because the water flow had gone down to virtually nothing and when i replaced the filter which it really needed it it was almost like a solid plug in there um the water flow did not really return and so I got in there, it's one of those uh, pumps that has a, a grate on it that you can turn and rotate and it, you can increase or decrease the flow of water. And while you can't decrease it to the point where you stop the flow of water, you can really greatly reduce it. And then of course with a clogged filter and then the growth that develops on the, um, you know, the grate itself, that will reduce the water even more. And as a result, I keep getting this water flow that's next to nothing but the thing that's baffling me is how that thing keeps turning itself back to a low flow position and i think what's going on is it's a combination of the vibration of the pump and then the grate probably has slightly angled slits in it and as the water flows through it, that angle of those vent fins, if you will, are creating a little bit of rotational torque on it. And that vibration with just that little bit of torque over time is slowly working that thing back to closed because this is the fourth or fifth time now I've had to get in there and twist it. And as soon as I twist it and open it, the water gushes out of there like a fire hose. This is about half way open between you know all the way as little as it will flow which is just sort of welling up and bubbling out of it versus you know the it, it's coming the water's coming out to here when i turn it all the way up and so that's how much flow i like to keep it at you can see i keep a piece of that foam board as a backsplash keeps my awesome wood paneling back there from getting all nasty and gross <laughs> or i guess more gross than wood paneling already is um 
So yeah, I just, I, it, it's just weird how that thing keeps turning itself off. I keep expecting it to simply be a clogged filter. And then when I get in there, the valve is closed again, or, you know, the, the opening in the front of it's closed again, open it back up and I've got nice free flowing water again. So it's probably a little bit of that rotational torque with the vibration and it's causing itself to close up. So that's really all that's going on in my native tank. Let's move on to my uh, 125. I just got in here and did a big water change the other day. I shot a whole video about that, so not a lot of uh, need to go into a ton of detail. I removed a lot of mulm. I removed a lot of red tiger lotus. And so what is still left in there not only looks great, but you can actually see it. A little bit of light coming into the tank. I had just, it was just mats of it growing across the surface and it was blocking a ton of the light. So my Tenopoma looked like he was getting ready to come over and say hello, but then saw me standing here and decided not to. I removed a big chunk of the fern you can see right there. I basically reduced that by half. And I reduced a bunch of the uh, green cyanobacteria and the crud and stuff. I got in there and vacked a bunch of that out while I was in there working on it. And then today in my mad dash around the room working on all my tanks i did remove another five gallons but i did it with my regular siphon not my gravel vac which is the open vinyl tube that creates a really strong suction force and i was able to get in all these little nooks and crannies i've got this set up so as the water flows around the tank it sort of deposits all the crud in those little um corners and so I got a bunch of it out of there that way uh, some cyanobacteria was growing on that rock you can see where I've cleared that away and it sort of left that green stain so I'm sure it'll be growing back at some point but I was able to remove that very easily and I also uh, removed a bunch of crud that was growing on the uh, power head there so I've got that nice and opened up and free flowing again uh, otherwise got in and wiped down the glass when I did my water change the other day so I didn't need to do that I did wipe down the outside of the glass while I was going around working on the various tanks in the room today and so that's about it that's a look at the whole 125 otherwise not a lot to talk about so moving on to my 20 gallon angelfish tank this tank I am pleased with. I did just get in and use the same uh, technique I was just talking about with the open siphon hose rather than the gravel vac type hose. And again, gives me that nice uh, forceful suction. I was able to get it down and pull a bunch of mulm and crud and stuff. Again, you can see I like my tanks busy. I like a lot of stuff in there, um, plants and rocks and woodwork and all that kind of stuff. Um, sound like an America song now. <laughs> uh, anyway, the, um, you know, the way I set my tanks up, it's just, it collects crud. Uh, you know, it's just, that's, that's the long and short of it. They, it's just not really designed for that stuff to move around the tank and swirl up and get sucked out by the filter and collected. So I've got to get in there and do it myself. And so I did that today. I got a lot of that stuff out of there. I pulled a few chunks of uh, fern out that had died and we're just kind of fading away. So I got that looking a little bit greener and nicer. And for my regular viewers that remember I got in here a little while ago and I tried to beat back all of that green cyanobacteria that just keeps coming back in this tank with a vengeance. And it's not. I'm really happy to say that even though I'm not trying to pretend the tank looks all sparkly clean and wonderful, it doesn't have that green slimy growth all over everything. I've probably got some red sign of bacteria going on in there, which, you know, you can see right there. Uh, that is my German blue angelfish. I know again, when you see it uh, at first glance, you might think it's black, but it actually has quite a bit of blue in it. When you see it under the light and it changes direction, you see all that uh, nice blue color light up on it. So I do have a lot of the, you know, the red stuff growing in there. I'm not worried about that. It was that carpet of green. Now I've got some green algae growing on the, the substrate. You can see some green algae growing on the rocks a little bit. I'm not worried about that. I just wanted to get that green, slimy, blue-green algae, as they call it, even though it's not really algae, it's cyanobacteria. Um, and it looks like I've done it. I found two little clumps of it since I finished my main treatment. Uh, one of them was on this piece of 
fern right there at the tip. It just had one little chunk of bright green growing on it. And I plucked that off and it was gone uh, about a week ago. And today when I was in there uh, siphoning the water out, I noticed there was another little chunk on one of the fronds of fern up here. And likewise, I just sucked it off with the siphon and it was gone. And that's it. I haven't really had an explosion of the stuff come back ever since. So hopefully we've finally gotten that stuff, you know, back under control. I am going to get in there and reduce that fern a little bit. Maybe even we'll put another plant in there, maybe float a little bit of water sprite or something simple. I don't know. We'll see. But it's going to be time for some new fish in this tank pretty soon, too. Um, it's been a long time since I bought fish and some of my tanks are starting to run low uh, on some of my more short lived fish. And so we will be uh, hopefully starting to get some of these tanks stocked up here in the very near future so speaking of that we've got my quarantine tank now all the fish in here right now are going to eventually end up in my waterfall tank i bought them for that purpose one of them is a little tiny tiny uh, bristle nose pleco no idea if that's male or female so i don't know if we're going to see the bristles or not the females don't develop the bristles only the males do if i understand that correctly these are Buenos Aires Tetras. I don't think I'm going to have a problem with them being in my open top tank. I'm not sure whether they're fin nippers or not. I tend to remember Buenos Aires being considered fin nippers, so I'm a little concerned about putting them in a tank with a garami, but eh, not too much. I think they'll be okay. Uh, and then finally in there somewhere... I don't see it at the moment. It was panicking when I was in there doing a little bit of work a little while ago. I have a high finned variatus uh, or platy, platy, whatever. And I don't see it at the moment. It must be hiding maybe behind the heater or something. But it was just labeled as a high finned platy, but it's gorgeous. It's like this bluish iridescent color and it's got black fins on it and i made sure i got a big fat round one so i think i got a pregnant female i'm not 100 percent sure but i think i got a pregnant female if we can find her anyway i do not see her all right anyway you know she's in there or it's in there we'll have to wait and find out uh, all right, moving on. Last and certainly not least is my formerly Barakish tank that we still call my Barakish tank because that's more the name of it rather than a description. Uh, nothing really to talk about in here this week or for this trip around the world, I should say. Uh, Butterbean's still in there doing his thing, looking pretty good. I really need to get in this tank. This is another one that's been slightly neglected. You can see the snail graveyard that is the remains of Butterbean's dinner. I can tell you there's some stuff starting to grow on the glass. And the nitrates in this tank are probably through the roof because Butterbean's a really, really messy eater. And I've got a few little endlers swimming around in there. But otherwise, nothing really uh, going on in this tank. I did have somebody ask me recently about... Uh, butter bean and whether or not he had been kept in brackish water and how long he had been kept in brackish water and all that kind of stuff uh, again my regular viewers know the whole story i kept him in brackish water from the day i got him for about the first five or six years i had him and i kept him in a specific gravity of 1.008 and he developed these white lesions all over him I, it was weird looking it was just like these white lines that looked like a a worm or something was carving grooves in his body and he, it was like a pattern that was developing all over his body and it was getting slowly worse and worse and worse and eventually I tried reducing the salinity and the more I reduced the salinity the better he looked and ultimately I brought him down to I'm probably around 1.002 or maybe 1.003 I'm below at this point what would generally be considered brackish water. You have to cross a certain threshold before it's really considered uh, brackish water when you're talking about the amount of salinity or the specific gravity of the water. 
and so I'm just below that threshold. And of course, once you get to the upper end of brackish water, you cross another threshold and then you get into what is considered low end uh, marine environments rather than a brackish environment. So I was keeping him at sort of a mid to low end brackish for years and years and eventually he developed issues. And now that I've got him into um, you know, mineralized water. I do still put marine salts in there. I just don't put nearly as much marine salts in there as I used to. So I still start with RO water and then I put marine salts in the water and I bring it up to about 1.002, 1.003, somewhere in that neighborhood. And that's where his water seems to be uh, doing well for him. I may even bring it down a little lower than that and see if he doesn't get even uh, better looking. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. So there you go, 40 minutes, made it all the way around. Pretty good, all things considered. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed. Make sure you're subscribed, you never know what you're going to get with me. Thanks for watching this one, I'll see you real soon in the next one.